Yes, ma'am. It is December 21st, 2020, and you are listening to the Candid Clarinetist Holiday Special on the Candid Clarinetist Podcast. What's going on, everybody? Sam Rothstein here, acting principal clarinet with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra and host of the Candid Clarinetist podcast. Thank you for all of the tremendous support that you have given the podcast since its inception in June. I'm looking forward to continuing this series into the new year new year with more fantastic guests and interesting topics i wanted to let you all know that there will not be a podcast episode next week as i'm taking some time off for the holidays but make sure to subscribe and follow us on social media to keep up with the latest happenings today i am so happy to welcome three of my very good friends as i am pleased to present the very first candid clarinetist holiday special first up we have ralph schiano principal clarinet with the detroit symphony orchestra ralph how's it going today Pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for being here. Uh, next, we have Will Amsel, who is the principal clarinet with the Buffalo Philharmonic. Will, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> and finally, we have Gabriel Campos Zamora, who is the principal clarinet of the Minnesota Orchestra. What's going on, Gabby? Well, I'm uh, spending the holiday with my family, although I'm not with my family here in Costa Rica, as you can see. San Jose on the background, that's what that is. Yeah, I think we're all wishing that we were uh, with you right now, spending in a nice uh, tropical location, because I'm pretty sure all of us are stuck in uh, at least freezing or below climates at this point in time. Um, so I just wanted to uh, have a fun time with this episode and just kind of, you know, yuck it up with you guys, and, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see all of you again and, and spend some time together. So let's just start it off. Uh, what is your most bizarre holiday concert moment? I know we've all played some seriously bizarre holiday concerts, and so I want to know, what's the most memorable, you know, bizarre moment that you've had? Who's, who's, who's ready to start? I think, uh, let's, let's go with Gabby. Gabby, why don't you st start us off? All right. Um, I don't really have many bizarre concerts. I do have a few, but uh, I'm going to be a little bit more PG-13 than usual here. I'm going to leave those out. But uh, I grew up with, with musician parents. My, my dad's a drummer and my mom's a singer. And uh, they'd have these Christmas gigs uh, at different like shopping malls and you know big stores back in the day when that was a thing. Uh, and they would play you know mostly Christmas tunes, but also Disney theme songs. Because back in the day, a lot of those Disney's movies came out in the holiday. Um, you might know that or not, depending on how old or young you are. Uh, and so I used to play a lot of those gigs with them as a kid, and I used to sing and also play. So I'd play something like the intro to Santa Claus is Coming to Town uh, on clarinet. And at that point, the clarinet was probably two-thirds of my height. So that's kind of my holiday initiation gig story. Actually, I, I remember when we first met, I was like, okay, let me just check this guy out on YouTube. I, I, I Googled your name on YouTube and like I saw a video of this little this little baby kid and he had this like huge clarinet and you're just like kind of shredding, you know, you're like kind of shredding on, on the clarinet and I'm like, oh, no wonder he's really good now. He was really good when he was like tiny as well. <laughs> um. Uh, Ralph, why don't you uh, why don't you uh, hit us with your bizarre holiday moment? I don't. I mean, I don't have like real bizarre holiday moments. I always really liked when the uh, when the holiday concert season comes around, like the mixture of Nutcracker and all of the Christmas Pops concerts. But the, I have like one very memorable Christmas Pops concert where um, you know how like a lot of times when we rehearse these Pops concerts, you, you don't really run through everything. Like they just assume everybody knows everything, and you get like you know, maybe a 30 minute sort of sound check. And we were going to do the 12 days of Christmas. And um, they were going to do this thing with the audience where like, every time we got to five golden rings, somebody was going to be running around in the audience with a microphone. And it was going to be sort of like hot potato or like musical chairs where it's like, when the orchestra gets to five golden rings, wherever we end up, they're going to stick a microphone in someone's face and they're going to have to sing five golden rings by themselves. And I was like, this is a terrible idea. 
But you know what happened was so crazy. So we did the show like five times and it was the most incredible concert because it was like all of these people just came out of the woodwork and it was everything from like five-year-old girls going like five golden rings and just being super cute to like full-on opera divas that came out of nowhere and just like blasted the roof off the auditorium it was incredible so anyway that's pretty cool um it's always funny when they do the old uh you know the old audience participation bit uh usually the so we we do these uh these shows outdoor shows sometimes over the summer where they have um you know they're like rock uh uh like anthologies right so it's like the music of uh led zeppelin or whatever and uh you know there's always you know this is the song that we play that somebody gets to come and conduct you know and everyone's like like, okay whatever you know it's in four the conductor starts and then it's fine and there was one time where like the guy who came and conducted was like incredible like, like absolutely, like way better than the, than that, than the like hack that was doing the concert. And it was just like the funniest thing. So sometimes you get a, you get a nice bonus from that, which is nice. Um, Will, how about you? Most bizarre. Um, maybe not most bizarre, but I, I definitely remember, I think this was in Rochester. It might've been in Buffalo, uh, doing a run out concert, a holiday run out and there was like a really terrible snowstorm which is somewhat common around these parts um and it was like a i think it was a judgment call as to whether we we're going to cancel the show and like the management just said let's just do it like it was a you know typically for a holiday run out like it's just it's a group or like a you know a school or a church or whatever that's just paid for the concert mm-hmm. so they're like let's just go you know the roads are open and so we went and i think there were like you know, under 10 people in the audience, like, cause no one showed up cause there was a, you know, snowstorm, but um, yeah, bizarre. I can't really, I can't really remember like anything too bizarre, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's uh, more, more to, uh, to delve into with all the concerts, especially with like nutcrackers and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you know, to, uh, to, to share, uh, Oh, go ahead, Gabby. Sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, I, I actually thought of a, um, bizarre, maybe not bizarre, but definitely unfortunate Christmas concert um, story. I I had just started a few months before as bass player in Kansas City. That was my first job there in that symphony. And we were doing a Christmas gig uh, that for some reason, I can't remember what they were playing on, but it had a saxophone player involved. And I showed up to the gig, to the concert, uh, and I opened my bass clarinet case only to realize that I had not brought my bass clarinet reeds. Um, and of course, I had just gotten there and I was a little bit nervous about getting tenure. For those of you that don't know, there's a, a period uh, in which you have to earn your tenure. And, you know, not showing up with reeds is definitely something that might hold you back from <laughs> getting your tenure. So I ended up playing that gig, that Christmas concert with sax reeds on the bass clarinet. It, so, as long as they're tenor reeds, they actually work though. Right, right. So ever since then, I keep an array of reeds in my locker, no matter what, and a mouthpiece too, just in case I forget, stuff yeah. like that. And you're not the only one who's done that. In fact, the one of the first times, I, I think it was the second time I played with the Chicago Symphony, I was playing with Laurie, and literally he walked, I was warming up or whatever, he walked on stage and I said, oh, Laurie, how's it going? Nice to see you. He's like, I'm doing well. You know, I'd be, I'd, be doing even better if you had a bass clarinet mouthpiece I could borrow. <laughs> this is like five minutes before the you know the downbeat and whatnot. So it's a uh, you know it's it's always an adventure. Uh, you got to be prepared for anything. And uh, I think my bizarre moment was it was it was kind of like Will's. There's in in Richmond, I, and I loved my time there. But Ralph can attest to this that there were there are there were concerts that we did that were. Uh, below average in terms of logistics uh just like and and there was one that we did it was like right before we did our nutcracker run i think it was like right after thanksgiving and it was some it was in some like civic center like tiny auditorium with like terrible soloists that were clearly like local talents of some sort and like <laughs> Just it was the most bizarre thing because like they didn't they literally didn't even know like how to rehearse a piece of music like they didn't know like what measures were and stuff it was the strain and and like you know the orchestra was very good and we were very like 
uh, proactive and studious and we wanted to like sound really good. But there just came a point in that rehearsal that everyone was just like, what is going on? Like what, you know, you just have these like crazy people up there that, you know, probably under the influence of something, you know, soloing with like this professional orchestra and you're just like, what is going on? So, um, yeah, there's definitely, uh, if, for those of you who don't have, uh, professional careers yet, you'll, you'll have some experiences. That's for sure. Uh, as you go through your careers and there'll be some concerts that are different, definitely memorable, probably from the, for the wrong reasons, but they make for good stories. So that's always a good thing. Um, so I want to go around the horn here and ask you guys, how many nutcrackers have you played total in your life? I'll start because I actually haven't played that many. I would say I did two seasons in Richmond and that's like 17 each. So uh, whatever that is, 34. And then there, there was like a couple more after that. So I think I'm below 40 in terms of like full nutcrackers, which is pretty, pretty good, I think. So um, who wants to go? Ralph, you want to go? Yeah, I haven't played. I honestly haven't played the Nutcracker since I left Richmond. But I mean, we played it probably 13 or 14 times a year. And I was there for 13 years. So I figure somewhere between 175 and 200. Yeah, that's a good one. Gabby or Will? Um, who, will, you want to go? No, no, go. I was going to ask the price. Uh, whoever plays the most Nutcracker. So far, I think I might win on Deadly numbers per se. And I actually haven't played them that many times either. I did play them, I'm going to guess them maybe 25, 26 times a year in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And my second year, I did most of them, if I remember correctly. So something like that. But then you always end up playing, even if you don't play the full cracker, and I'm sure you guys have done this a ton, you end up playing the suite with, you know, the greatest hits put together, or maybe you just play the the Walls of the Flowers at a Christmas show or something like that. So I've done that forever since I was... Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, like, for example, we do Yuletide every year. It's a big show. We had Jack, Jack Everly on a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, you know, there's always selections from the Nutcracker in there, whether they're jazzed up or, you know, like you said, Waltz of the Flowers or whatever. So in terms of that, I'm definitely, you know, in the triple digits, but full actual Nutcrackers. I think right now Ralph's in the lead. Will, can you, can you best him? No, I don't think, I don't think I can best a uh, hundred. What do you say? 175? Jeez. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm pushing 50, but definitely not in Ralph's territory right now. Do you guys do them uh, as a regular thing in Buffalo or was, or Uh, in Buffalo we do, we only do two. Uh, It's like, it's actually a pretty light week um, compared to where I used to play in Rochester, where I think they do maybe six or maybe even seven now. I'm not sure. Um, But yeah, we just do like, it's like a split orchestra week with uh, Nutcracker and Messiah on like Thanksgiving always. Oh, nice. Um, You know, obviously not this year, but yeah. yeah yeah and messiah week's always great especially if it's not a split week (laughs) because the best my favorite my favorite piece during the holidays no clarinets so yeah for those who didn't understand that reference um but so what do you guys like the most about the nutcracker because i think it's actually one of the pieces that you know we play the most as professionals but is generally well liked i would say um, it's cha- it's fairly challenging, but uh, the music's kind of great. You know, it's it's rewarding. So, what is your what is your favorite moment in the Nutcracker? And this could be either like you know a staging that you've seen or just a musical moment. It could be a specific moment. So, uh, Will, you want to uh, go? I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, just like the whole first act of the Nutcracker, I just I like no matter how many times I play it. I love playing it. I mean, it has great clarinet parts for one, um, but just like the whole thing, it's just, I think it might even be my favorite Tchaikovsky. Just like, it's like through composed. It's, uh, it's just like, it just makes sense. The whole thing. It's not that long and it just works. And I, you know, wherever I'm in a pit, I can almost never see what's going on. And so I'm just listening or playing. Um, and I think it's great. I love the first act. The second act is, is great too. Like, you know, for its own, uh, you know, for its own reason, like it's, you know, it's got all the, all the solos on stage and stuff, but, um, you know, the first act for me is just like, I could play that. Um, you know, I, I don't get tired of doing that. Yeah. First act's also, I think a little easier endurance was. 
at least for um, me. It's... I don't know. I think there's more meaty clarinet stuff really in the first act. I mean, I think mm -hmm. like the, um, what is it? Like the, the second, is that the, like the second big number with the sort of like, uh, with the big clarinet solo that comes out. I think that's just great. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's really fun. And then you're just playing the whole time. So I, I don't, yeah, I mean, it, you're playing a bunch, both, you know, both halves, but I, I totally dig the first act. Yeah. Uh, which one of you guys wants, wants to go next? I, I like the, uh, I like the Arabian dance. That's my favorite. Oh, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just like every time we would get to that dance, I would be like, oh yeah. <laughs> ready for this let's do it and it's like i just love i love the nutcracker because i feel like for so many people it's it's their first experience with classical music and maybe for some people their only experience with classical music so it's like at every intermission there are going to be children there who've never seen an orchestra before coming up to the edge of the pit and looking down and and they always remember like all of the dances you know whether it's the sugar plum fairy or the arabian dance or whatever yeah, absolutely. Gabby, how about you? Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but one of the first classical music experiences I had growing up was watching uh, Fantasia and the Nutcracker numbers. Uh, and I very much had an experience like Will, where uh, I enjoyed the first act the most because it has so many first clarinet solos. So, uh, but even if you're playing um, second in bass, which is typical if you're playing the reduced orchestra version, mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun too because it's kind of total solos. Um, but I, I will say that it, it is tough to play the whole thing many, many times. Perhaps that's the sort of elephant in the room and that and why it gets a bad rep just among uh, the industry because you play it so many times and listen to us complain. Uh, we should ask the guys over at the New York Ballet to see how many times they have done it in their careers. Um, but you do have to play a lot. And unfortunately, he doesn't write often in a way that allows you to rest, mm -hmm. really. Uh, but it's it, it is a it's just a great piece. It's it's just fun to play, and I personally like the um, exposure in, in in playing solos. Absolutely. I have a I have like a clarinet nerdy question for you guys because, I mean, all of my experience playing the Nutcracker pretty much was all in Richmond basically. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what's the one that's like beam bum beam? Is it the Sugar Plum Fairy beam bum yeah. beam bum bum? Um, so we were watching Fantasia two nights ago. I, I actually had never seen it before. And in that version, when the clarinet's coming and they go like, yeah, dee -dee -dee -dum, mm -hmm. yeah da -da -da -dum. do you guys do it that way? Cause like that became kind of a running joke in Richmond. Like we would try to see who could stretch it longer. But then these guys, I, is that Phil it's the Philadelphia Orchestra, right? Yeah. I mean, it was like exaggerated. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I, go ahead. Um, no, sorry, sorry, Sam. Um, I I don't know where that happened where there was like a basically like a tenuto competition on that number um and I was like this is like at a certain point like this is ridiculous like why is it why are we doing this and I had I mean I grew up watching Fantasia but like I obviously like wasn't paying attention to the length of the first note on the 16th um <laughs> you and weren't then, dude I was are you kidding <laughs> and and we you know we have like uh well, uh, Disney Plus now with the kids and stuff, and we were and we were playing it for uh, for our oldest daughter, and I was like, they are taking so much time on that first <laughs> note. No, and like so, yeah, I guess that's where like the game started because everyone's trying to imitate that thing. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up because I had never like thought where that came from until I just saw Fantasia as well. See, I always thought it came from Richmond been... because of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what i, I thought think too and then i was I like did i start this yeah. <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if that came from the conductor and the clarinet just being fed up with him just yeah. wanted more and more and more but i'm, I'm not gonna lie uh, because we played it so many times uh you know you kind of start to get an itch to do something new and i was i would definitely do some uh let's just say fun things in the in the walls of the flowers i mean i was i was going for it i was going da -da 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 Da, 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 da. Just you know, you you hear the giggles audibly in the, in the concert, usually once or twice, and then. You, you but I think them. you know that's good though, because you got to keep it interesting, right? I mean, you're playing it. You know, I mean, you talk to like the New York City Ballet Orchestra or the San Francisco Ballet Orchestra. I mean, they're playing the stupid thing. I shouldn't say stupid thing, but they're playing the thing like 60 times, you know. And so you got to find ways to keep it fun, keep it interesting, keep your colleagues engaged. And so finding little things like that, where it like 
you know, yes, maybe it is it is a little bit over the edge, but at least it, it provides a little bit of energy, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not just a gimmick. It's it's kind of a fun, you know, running thing. So um, Ch- I like that. Chances one. are the only ones that notice that kind of stuff are musicians anyway. Exactly. I can't imagine that an audience member is going to be like, why did that Star Nip player take so much damn time on that F? You know, <laughs> yeah. I highly doubt that. Yeah, unless you're Will watching it with your uh, with your kids. <laughs> that would be right. the only time. Well, the you dancers know, are definitely not going to stop dancing, depending on how much you know time some. Did. Yeah. I know your kids are probably like, "Why is Daddy so upset?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I have to say that my favorite moment is the pot of do in the second act, uh, partially because, well, I, I mean, up to ninety percent because there's a nice fat bass clarinet solo at the beginning there, and actually that was my first uh, time playing with like a big orchestra. I played with the Milwaukee Symphony. It was like a Christmas thing and the pat do was on there and I was like okay got to you know got to sound good got to get called back and it was really fun to just like play that it's just a really beautiful uh, piece of music um I think it's really powerful um so and then my my least I'm, favorite go ahead Carl. I'm going to I'm going to embarrass you though because I, I was on your audition committee when you won the bass clarinet job in Richmond and that was the solo that you won the job with we oh. were like completely blown away by it so bravo good. all right at least I did it did it well then um, and then you got to hear me do it like 17 more times later that year. Uh, so I hope it was, I hope it was good enough. Um, but I, I got to say my least favorite part of the Nutcracker is the final waltz, depending, depending on how slow it is. Cause if it's too, the slower it is, the more hatred I have in my heart for it. Cause it's just like holding on for dear life till the, till you get to the end. So um, I think you guys, I'm seeing a lot of head shake, head nodding, so I, I'm, I'm guessing we're getting some agreement there. Um, well, very cool. Uh, let's move a little bit away from the music stuff. I, I know that holidays are a really special time for families and gatherings. Obviously, Gabby, you're in Costa Rica now visiting your family. Um, so what are your, some some of your special holiday holiday traditions uh, with your own families? Uh, who's, who needs to start? Ralph, why don't you start? Oh, geez. I mean, I feel like I'm a little bit caught on on the spot here, so I'm maybe this is gonna be a bit of an overshare. But I grew up as like a I grew up in a very Catholic family, and so Christmas was like a big deal in our family. And um, I rem I just remember this like so clearly because it was so stressful. I have three younger brothers, and so the four of us were growing up in this Catholic family, and so we had this manger scene that would get set up basically right after Thanksgiving. But everything was in there except for the baby Jesus. And the manger scene was made out of um, like ceramics. So everything was like really hard, including the manger where where baby Jesus is going to be. So in this little drawer underneath the manger scene, my parents kept a bag full of straw. And every time we would do like a good deed or something like that, we were allowed to put like one piece of straw in for the baby Jesus, you know, so like to like make the bed like a little bit softer. And I just remember us fighting over like who was getting more. St- I mean, it was like completely not. We were missing the point. We were getting <laughs> fighting over who was nicer. Well, hopefully you did enough good deeds. Otherwise, that would be one uncomfortable bed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That stuck with me for some reason. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Gabby, how are you? Um, it, it, we did exactly the same thing, Ralph. In fact, uh, th- some of those words, I don't even know what, what they were in English until just now. But but we would put together, what do you call it again? With The, the manger? Or the, the nativity, nativity scene? Yeah. yeah, the nativity scene, but but the little Jesus wouldn't be put there until after the 24th. And, and I remember that being a lot of fun because we'd go to these places that would be dedicated to selling all the things that went into that which I don't really see around anymore. I'm sure there are a few of them, but it's it's just not as popular as it used to be. Uh, but really, our, our Christmas celebrations are not all that different from those in, in the United States. Uh, but of course, you know, culturally speaking, we, we have certain things that we do differently. For example, at the end of a year, we eat tamales, which are similar but uh, to the Mexican tamales, um, which are these corn flour um, tamales, right? And, and people have these sort of competitions over who makes the best tamale. And you can put usually pork, but you can put other meats and prunes and other vegetables, really delicious. And they're wrapped around in a, in a plantain leaf and then boiled. And that's kind of what you eat for, for Christmas, strangely enough, that and um, pork, like a pork leg, if you will. But yeah, I mean, Christmas, uh, like I said earlier, 
usually I would spend uh, with my parents gigging around the country because they'd go out on these Christmas gigs that used to be a huge deal. I mean, they'd have sponsorships from Coca-Cola. So the the uh, polar bear would come and, and for whatever reason, Coca-Cola is the beverage of Christmas. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure about the history of all that. Um, so, you know, and, and that's just not the case anymore because, um, you know, people aren't all that interested in Christmas while they're shopping for groceries. <laughs> yeah. And Will, how about you? Um, well, I mean, the tamales, I, you know, I grew up in Texas um, and actually, usually we go home. Uh, my parents live in Dallas now. And so usually we'll travel uh, around Christmas uh, to hang out with them. Um, not this year. Um, but I've been looking around here where to find tamales because usually like we're in Dallas. So it's really easy to find tamales because there's like great Mexican food everywhere. Um, I know as a kid, like my dad's Jewish. And so we kind of did Hanukkah and Christmas, but you know, like Hanukkah always gets short shrift uh yeah. you know to christmas it's just like you just can't compete with you know the big tree with lights and gifts under it. it just like having kids now like it just it doesn't rate like it's just not the same um so you know we did both and we would usually travel to my grandparents uh house in they lived outside of virginia um when they were alive um and uh you know my, if we couldn't make it up, I guess the one sort of holiday food thing um, that I always think about, if we couldn't make it to them to Virginia, my grandfather would smoke a ham and then ship it. And so if we weren't at his house, we would be eating one of his smoked hams that was like wrapped in tin foil and then like put in bubble wrap in a box with like, you know, packing peanuts from his garage. And like, that's what we had, uh, you know, on Christmas. Um, so that's kind of like a, a food thing, you know, since, since uh, Gabby has the tamales going. Yeah, that sounds amazing, actually. Um, I, I think for me, I mean, there's a number of traditions, and obviously it's kind of changed over the years, obviously. Uh, you know, you get married and traditions change and uh, your thoughts change and whatnot. But uh, one thing I always enjoyed uh, was we would... Uh, on Christmas Day, when I was going back after college to visit my hometown and visit my mom and dad, uh, all my friends from high school would kind of get together on Christmas night uh, after we did our family things, and we'd just, like, hang out at the local dive bar. And those were some of the, like, most fun nights that we had because, you know, we we were, you know, all in school or just graduated or whatever, and everyone sort of has their own life, and it's a kind of a special time. So I, I miss that Um I don't really get to do that anymore because my parents moved out of that town, but I'm hoping at some point I can go back and do that. And then one hey, thing wasn't I'm, I around? Wasn't I around? You for were. One of those? You did. You yeah yeah. You spent uh, one Christmas with us. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Um, and then uh, one other thing I'm looking forward to, which is uh, my wife. Uh, she, they have a big family farm in Kentucky, and they always go down there and they do skeet shooting and uh, you know hang around the farm and whatnot and we for whatever reason we haven't had a chance to do that yet so and this year obviously we won't have a chance to do that either so i'm looking forward to that becoming a new tradition uh as well for me so uh, i know that gabby and will spoke upon their uh holiday uh food preferences uh ralph what is your what is your usual typical holiday meal you know like, food wasn't like a big part of my family growing up and so it's fun because now we're like starting those traditions and it with my wife and her family because they're all here in michigan um so we steer clear of turkey because nobody seems to like turkey in my family and we always do like some sort of roast beast or roast beast, roast beast. <laughs> what am i cindy lou who <laughs> yeah. roast, roast beef or uh or like steak usually but it's been fun like coming up with the recipes that the family you know really gathers around yeah i think that's one of the most fun things about like getting a new family i mean not a new family but adding on to your family is you get you get a chance to like sort of create your own traditions you know like my wife and i, I you know we did hanukkah in my house as well growing up but it was never a big thing um and she was like if i'm gonna be married to you and we're gonna have kids and their last name is gonna be rothstein we're gonna do hanukkah you know and so we've we've done this thing every year where we've made latkes on like the first night of hanukkah and, well, she's pretty much made them. I've I've helped. I'm, I'm not going to give myself any credit for making them, um, but it's uh it's really fun to like to just sort of come up with new things and uh you know I that's part of, that's one of the things I just love about uh you know being married and and having a partner like that is just 
uh, you get to sort of develop these new things and, and have your, you have your new family. So, um, that's really cool. Uh, for me, food wise, for some reason, my family, we made King crab legs on Christmas Eve and, uh, and this really, and this really good rice dish that I like. So that always, that became a tradition for us is every Christmas Eve. Where are you from? Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Is that like a Midwest thing? Cause I was at Costco the other day and they've, they're just selling tons of crab legs. And I was like, should this be a tradition? Because that looks. I good. mean, it's really good. I recommend it, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it's a Midwest thing. And I, I, honestly, like, I don't know. I think like my mom would make something different, and then for some reason we just like settled on that. And every year we do that. Huh. And you know, it's great. Like, uh, if you especially like seafood, it's great. So. Do they fish for a lot of crab around Lake Michigan? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to ship those guys in. Yeah. So I have a, not a food question, but I haven't, uh, it's a, I wouldn't call it an argument, but a discussion right now um, with my wife about uh, the tradition of opening presents on either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And I grew up, we would open maybe like one thing Christmas Eve and then like the big haul and and stockings and all the rest of it Christmas Day. She grew up like, I think, almost everything Christmas Eve and maybe like one little thing Christmas Day. And so I wanted to see what y'all did or do go. Well, I, I grew up uh, visiting my dad's side of the family and my and my mom's side of the family both on Christmas Eve. So by the time we were done with all of that, it was well past midnight. So by then it's already the 25th. And, you know, once we knew that as kids that, you know, past midnight is the next day, there was no excuse for not opening every single present then. So I, I think the night of the 24th. Mm -hmm. Ralph, how about you? I'm all presents all Christmas. Yes, I agree with that. I think it's a bad take. I think it's a bad take to open Christmas Eve. Just me, maybe one thing I can, I can tolerate that, but... I think for me, it was always the excitement of like, you know, trying to go to bed and then waking up the next morning and then boom, like I said, big haul. It's just sitting I mean, there all for you. Dude, in fact, I'm instituting a new tradition based on this conversation next year, which is going to be that Santa lives and sorry, I don't know how young our listeners are. <laughs> But Santa's alive. I, what are you talking about? Of course. He but does. I want to. I want to like hide all the presents, and then like Christmas Eve, each of us sneaks downstairs and puts the presents under the tree, so that we when we wake up, it's like that experience again. Because it's kind of like when you don't have kids, and you just see the presents kind of like slowly collecting under the tree. It's not the same, you know. Yeah. Well, why you gotta wait till next year? You still got four days. Because they're all there now. Oh. What am I gonna do? Like. Oh man, rest in peace. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, yeah, I, I like, you know, I do, I do like the excitement of having like the pile all of a sudden show up. I think that's, that's, that's pretty solid. Will, how about you? I, I think you're the only one here with kids. So, so what, what's your like thoughts on that? I mean, it's hard because this year is, well, we have a almost two and a half year old and, and a just six month old. Um, so the six month old, like she didn't, you know, she doesn't know what the hell's going on anyway. Um, but our, our two year old is like, you know, this year we've like been in the house all day every day all year um and so we just like you know we've gotten like boxes from the grandparents weeks in advance so and then you know we we're like are we gonna get a tree yeah of course we're gonna get a tree we're not going anywhere so we're gonna get a tree and we filled up you know all the boxes from the grandparents and they've just been sitting there for like two weeks now and every day our two-year-old is like, what's, what's going on here? Like, let's, let's do this. <laughs> and so we sort of, we, we compromised by, um, we did like, we did a zoom, uh, uh, like one night of Hanukkah with my folks and she got, you know, like the typical Hanukkah presence of like underpants, you know, like that's like, you know, those are like, cause there's like eight nights and you gotta like, you know, you gotta stretch it out with the socks or whatever. Um, but it's, uh, I don't know because this is a weird year so i don't know in like a normal year when you know we'd be like traveling and, and how it would go down but this year it's been um like a daily conversation like we're gonna wait a couple more days we yeah. might 
we might fake Christmas and just say like it's tomorrow and let's just do it because she doesn't care. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like you're you're at the uh, unlucky stage where like she asks questions now and then you're you're put in a, like a weird position. Uh, yeah, and and you you know you do sort of like you don't want to just lie all the time like you want to <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, you, you can lie a little bit, you know, to like keep things moving, you know, you got to keep the train moving, but, um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta like start telling the truth at some point. Yeah. I got you. Well, that's cool. I, I love hearing the different traditions and, um, traditions are one of my favorite things about the holidays. And I, like I said before, I think one of the best things about traditions is that you can have new ones and you can have old ones and you can have ones that you create like Ralph, you're putting all the presents out one time next year. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, so th- on a little more serious note, I know this has been a tough year for everybody, uh, everywhere to be honest. Um, but I think I want to focus on the positives. So I want to hear from you guys, uh, what's one triumph that you had in 2020 and then one thing that you hope to accomplish in 2021, you know, and you can do personally, professionally, you can do both. So I'll, I'll start this off, uh, just so to give you a little time to think about it. But my triumph, I think, honestly, has been uh, my realization that uh, I'm more than a clarinetist and more than a musician. I wrote this in a blog post um, a couple weeks ago uh, that if you haven't had a chance to read, it's on my website. But I think that this, you know, not having work for nine months or whatever really gave me a time to kind of reevaluate myself and just be like, okay, like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I literally can't do it. I can't perform every week in the orchestra. So what am I going to do? And so it took me a while to find the answer to that. And I think that like this podcast has been a real triumph for me in terms of just like, you know, I, I got all the equipment. I learned how to do it. I advertised. I did the social media. I'm getting great guests. I'm getting great feedback. I'm finally getting, you know, like gigs and stuff from it. So it's it's been a real triumph for me to like become like this kind of content creator uh, to, to have that role. Uh, especially in this community, because I feel like it, it lacks, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of content creators in the music world and in the clarinet community, but I feel like the quality isn't as high as some other industries. And so I feel like I've been trying to push the bar of that. And for me, that's been a triumph. Um, and then in 2021, um, I think, honestly, I just want to be a better person. I want to volunteer more. I want to do more good for others. I want to continue to do this podcast uh, I want to be a better colleague. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a, just a better member of society. And I feel like if everyone strives to do that, uh, we'll just have a much nicer world. So that's that's a personal goal for me uh, for, for 2021. So anyone uh, want to go next? I'll leave it up to whoever's ready. Whoever unmutes first. <laughs> don't all don't all go, don't all go at once. <laughs> all right, I'll oh, go. I'll go. Ty, we all did it. Go, Ralph. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I guess that triumph for me during this time has just been uh, related to teaching mostly, feeling like uh, I was able to kind of pull together some resources and publish some things that are really helping some of my students. And to, you know, I've I've really enjoyed some of the digital opportunities that this time has, has sort of allowed us to meet people that we wouldn't meet otherwise. And, um, there was a there was a moment when I thought maybe none of it was going to work, and um, I think the triumph for me was realizing that, you know, if you think a little bit differently and and try things differently, that some people who you couldn't reach before you can actually reach now in this way, and you can create things that probably you never would have created before. So, so that's been fun. Um, I guess in twenty twenty one, um, I I. I Sure. I mean, I want to be a, a better person too, but I also, uh, there you go. <laughs> I also kind of like want to, I, I want to reinvest in, in my playing in a different way because, um, you know, we, we couldn't play for a little while and then the DSO went back to playing some concerts on a fairly regular basis. And, um, and then I broke my finger. And so I've been out of commission for weeks now. And so I won't get to play again until the middle of January, maybe the end of January. And and just having this sort of taken away from me and given back to me and taken away from me has really made me realize, I think when I was in the middle of it, I was like, I'm not sure if I really love this. I don't know. Like I was getting kind of sad and, you know, 
but having it taken away has really sort of cemented the fact that I really do love it and that I really do want it. And and so I'm I'm excited to kind of like re-engage with it in 2021. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. Um, and I've had this conversation, man, with a lot of people. Will, you and I were talking about this the other day when we were when we were visiting was the fact that it was simply taken away and it, and there was no opportunity. It's not just like, you know, my orchestra folded and I can go gig somewhere else. Like literally nobody could do it. Made me realize the value of it. Cuz I was always kind of like, "Oh, you know, um people are like music is so important." I'm like, "Yeah, sure." You know, I was never like, oh, yeah, it's this great cultural thing that we need. But having it taken away completely, not by choice, um, was very revealing to me. And I think it made me realize that everybody's jobs are important. You know, like the thing I hated the most is people like, get a real job now. It's like, well, what, what defines a real job? You know what I mean? Like, what is a real job? Everybody has a real job. And just because you're, you know... A doctor saving someone's life, obviously, that's incredibly important. But so is making music. So is working at the Amazon factory. So is, you know, being a teacher. Like, these are all important jobs for a functioning society. And I think that, uh, you know, definitely having it taken away from me and it sounds like from you that it, it's really given us all a little bit of perspective and made us want to come back even better. Yeah. And just to piggyback on that, I mean, the opportunity for for patrons, supporters, like clarinet lovers in the, in in our community to sort of like come and visit me in my studio in this sort of more intimate way and for me to be able to like make music to people in a way that actually means something to them like if they say that this is the kind of music I love and I try to put together some sort of video or recording or something like that that taps into something that I never had growing up because I don't come from a musical family I didn't grow up with this you know and so when I get to see face to face people like what it means to people that's I think part of what helped me kind of come back blah 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 yeah absolutely that's awesome man uh, really really proud of i mean i'm proud of all you guys i mean it's just been it's been tough and i and i think that uh you know just just having the resiliency to know to to know that you are, are valued in society and you can we can still do this at a high level and we're all looking forward to like i think it's it also has given us a different perspective like oh wow like the possibilities are endless for what we do you know it's really forced us to do that so that's really great um uh, Will, you want to fire it up? Well, I mean, I was just, you know, thinking about, um, you know, just you like starting this this project. Um, and, you know, I, I wasn't surprised that you would do something like this, but it's just really cool. Um, you know, and I, you know, just want to congratulate you on that. And I think it's great. And, you know, I'm a fan. Like, I, <laughs> I, I don't listen to every episode, but like, well, I listen to... Well, why don't you listen to every episode? You know, again, it's like the it's the waking up at five thirty sometimes and going to sleep at whenever you know. Again, I'm just, I'm um, just kidding. Um, but like, you know, I I, I never would have listened to, um, or I never would have had a chance to like talk to your teacher, you know. But I feel like you're like your first episode. I was like, oh, I, I like know a little bit about that person now, and you know, and I, I know I've listened to a bunch more episodes, and but that's just one. I was like, wow, that's that's really cool that. Um, you know, that you put that out there. I think that's really great. Um, Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, seriously. So what what was your question? To, triumph of 2020. Yeah, triumph and, of 2020. And then what do you want to accomplish in 21? I mean, you know, I've, I've talked about, um, you know, family stuff a couple of times. And, but, you know, for me, it's, um, it kind of comes back to that, to 2020. It's like the triumph for, for us is, well, I mean, we, we had a new kid in 2020. We had a COVID baby. Um, that that was great, you know, and everything was was okay. It was bizarre, you know. You were talking about um, bizarre holiday concerts. That was the that was kind of a bizarre birth, you know. You'd go in yeah. and and uh, at that point, it was um, our daughter was born in June, um, so it wasn't like right when everything started. So they had sort of figured out how to do stuff. But I was, you know, talking to uh, a friend the other day, and they had. Um, they had a kid in March, I think like right at the end of March. So it was like right at the beginning of no one really knew what the hell was going on. Um, and, you know, it was at that point when, you know, just, uh, you know, no spouses, no partners were allowed in the room and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, personally for me, that was a huge triumph, you know, for, for our family and that we've, you know, we've been healthy. That's been a huge, a huge triumph and that we haven't, uh, 
um, killed each other being in being the house all the time together. <laughs> that's that's a huge drive. <laughs> um, uh, you know, professionally, I'm you know I'm really grateful that uh, you know I think probably like like all of you guys, uh, you know, there's been some level of you know whether it's uh, you know different degrees, but some level of less work or you know cuts in pay or whatever. But you know we're still chugging along. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, my orchestra has, has really come through for us. And so that's been, that's been great. Um, as far as 2021 goes, um, you know, again, it's the, there's the family stuff, you know, just want to, you know, keep, you know, everybody sane and, and happy and healthy. Um, and, and music clarinet goals, um, I think a little bit like what, what you and Ralph were talking about, um, you know, I've had to, I've had to go back and, and play. We've done probably like everybody else, like, you know, a streaming series for subscribers and stuff like that. Um, you know, but it's not playing every week and it's been some, you know, like we did Beethoven Septet a few weeks ago and then, you know, there'll be like three weeks where I don't go into work and play. So it's kind of like, it's this strange time where like, I, you know, I, I don't play for three weeks and then I have to play like this big chamber music piece for orchestra, it's just like a very, it's a strange time. Um, but, you know, I think what it, um, what it does is it, I, you know, I just often I'm thinking about like, man, I really can't wait until, you know, we can all get back and like play big pieces with the orchestra. Like, and you know, what's really cool about that is in, in sort of pre COVID times while you're doing it, um, you know, you're exhausted and you're stressed out and you're like trying to sound good and you don't think about that, but it's been nice to think, I really do like doing that. And when we get to do that again, that's going to be cool. Um, so that's been, that's been really fun to think about. So I'm sort of looking forward to that, um, for next year or, you know, hopefully next year, you know, maybe fall that might, that might happen. You don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, I mean, I, I think we can all be thankful of the, for the scientific community, uh, and for the uh, medical community for kind of leading the charge here uh, recently with everything. My brother just got vaccinated a couple of days ago, which is pretty cool. Uh, he's, a, he's a doctor, um, and I've seen so many photos of people getting vaccinated. So that's it's, it's really exciting that, uh, you know, we're, we're not rounding the corner yet, but, you know, at least we're, we're getting some reinforcements. So uh, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I'm hoping that, you know, things can start getting back to normal and that this horrific... Uh, thing will end sooner rather than later so we can stop losing so many precious lives that we've that we've lost so um thanks for sharing that will gabby you want to you want to jump in on this one yeah um i'm gonna try not to be redundant because a lot of the things that uh, i was uh, thinking about sharing you guys have already covered namely um the sort of uh, self uh, discovery or criticism if you will uh, with respect to our careers, but also uh, with respect to who we are as people and how we carry ourselves. Um, I, I would say as a triumph, although I wouldn't necessarily describe it with, with that exact word, um, um, I did a lot of things that I wouldn't have normally done, I don't think. For example, um, I started doing a lot of cycling, and I know that's not particularly interesting but it's, it was interesting to me anyway and i really got into it and i started cycling with greg williams who's uh assistant principal in, in minnesota orchestra and, and we'd go out for five six hours at a time uh, which i never knew uh, i could really do physically i well first of all i never thought i i would have the the guts to put on um you know bibs and a really yeah, tight shirt. Say, are you and, one of the people uh, who, who were? Oh there? yeah, oh, full yeah. on. But but I was so <laughs> against that. I, I was I, going to catch me dead with with a bib um, in, in those tights. But but then you learn that it's actually kind of necessary if you want to be comfortable on the bike for that many hours. Now you've got them so, in, in a wide array of pastels and very exactly. Colors. Now I have many of them in pink and bright yellow and whatnot, and and also. Um, because I was, I think in part, I was somewhat of a mediocre academic student. I've always had this sort of question mark in the back of my head about whether or not I could have been an academic student. And so out of curiosity, I decided to take some uh, science classes at the university. And I just finished my first semester of two classes and I did 
I did really well, actually. So I kind of proved to myself that I do have that in me. And I'm going to continue, especially because we will continue to have some extra time. I don't know where it's going to take me, if it's going to take me somewhere um, at all. But that's been really interesting to see how people uh, need to think about what they're doing and, and some of the skills that um, that requires. Uh, so I'm hoping for 2021, for example, that I will import some of those skills, namely, you know, more of a scientific way of of thinking into into music and particularly for somebody like me who is a very let's just say improvisatory i see ralph already laughing because he <laughs> knows me well enough but i remember my teacher he'd give me a hard time uh in lessons because i'd come in the lesson and i'd start pretty you know playing an etude pretty well but i'd get distracted and he'd give me crap about how oh gabby you're already thinking about the girl and what beer you have to and you don't focus and you make stupid mistakes because you don't focus and it's true and or it was true and hopefully uh, you know, something like this can give me the skills to to focus a bit better and and you know obviously become a better person and also uh, help me manage something as as uh, otherwise seemingly inconsequential as time, right? Um, because all of a sudden I had deadlines and had uh, for one of the classes a, a team, so they relied on me every couple of weeks as far as submitting the work and, and, and that's very new. It's very unlike um, the path I took. I don't know if you guys went to university. Uh, if so, you, then you know very well what I'm talking about. I didn't because I went to a conservatory. Mm -hmm. so, well, that's cool, man. And I'm really proud of you for doing that. And I think that's really cool that the one thing that this thing afforded us that we all of us had never been afforded before, well, except for maybe with the exception of Will because you have a family to raise, but uh, was time. And I think it gave us a lot of time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I remember like back in January, February, whatever, I was like, man, if I just had, you know, six weeks off, I could figure my equipment out and I'd be good. It's like, well, here you go, Sam. Did you do it? It's like, well, yeah, I did actually. I, I think I did. I think I made some progress. So that's been nice. It's like all these things that I was like, oh, I just don't have enough time for. It's like, well, you got all the time in the world now. So you better start, you know, putting your money where your mouth is. So, uh, well, thanks for sharing, everyone. I know that's a little uh, that can be a little uh, vul vulnerable. Uh, so, thank you for uh, opening up to to uh, the listeners about your various triumphs and what you're looking forward to in 2021. Uh, so, I wanted to finish out tonight with a little uh, what I call a lightning round. So, basically, I'm just going to ask you guys like an either or question or a yes or a no question, and you guys can all unmute for this. Just so, uh, and I'll I'll try to go around, and it doesn't have to be like super fast, but whatever you think the answer is. So I'm going to go in order. So it's going to be at least in order where you are on my screen. So it'll be Ralph, then Gabby, then Will. Does that work for you guys? Okay. So uh, first thing, uh, Ralph, do you like A White Christmas or no? Not the, the movie, movie. Not the movie, the, the, the act. So like snowing on Christmas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Gabby? I have no idea what you're talking about. So when it, snow <laughs> <laughs> when it snows on Christmas, people say we have a white Christmas. Do you just mean snow and Christmas? Yeah, on Christmas Day. Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. Will. Oh, yeah, of course. 100%. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we're 4 for 4 there. Definitely definitely for me as well. Charlie Brown Christmas or Muppet Christmas Carol? Muppet. Gabby? That's it. Um, man, all these American references. This is tough. Uh, I'm going to say Muppet. I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna decline and I'm gonna go with uh, National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. So. Okay, yeah, you're breaking the. I had one for later, but you just broke the game. So thanks. Oh, sorry, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, so for me, I'm gonna go with Charlie Brown. I, I I I mean, I like both, but Charlie Brown, you do just classic. Eggnog, yes or no? No. With rum, yes. <laughs> okay, only with rum, not plain. <laughs> not plain, just only if it has rum. Okay. <laughs> Eggnog, no. Yeah, for me, it, it used to be a yes, and it's a no now. Uh, nutcracker or Holiday Pops? Nutcracker. Nutcracker. Definitely Nutcracker. Okay, Holiday Pops for me. Sorry, guys. Wow. Uh, V12 or traditional reeds? <laughs> it depends on the mouthpiece, <laughs> but for me now, V12. Um, I'm going to go with the economy reeds, traditional. That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, blue box, three and a half, all day, every day. Okay, my man. I'll, I'll go with three and a half. 
though i'm on the fours now so you know oh Ooh. dude you've been working out yeah that's like the, that's like the next level when you get really you get your master's degree yeah, that's right you start playing no four and a half. um animated grinch or the jim carrey version of grinch animated you know i don't think i've ever seen the animated what so i'm gonna uh, okay you All gotta right. go you, watch that yeah you have to go watch that that's your homework well animated for me for sure yeah animated for me uh this is a good one. East Coast or Midwest? Because I think we both, we've all lived on both. Mm. <laughs> Except for Will. We may, well, maybe Will never lived in the Midwest. I mean, it, that's tough because my yeah. people are here now, you know? So, but I do enjoy living on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one. Can I, can I do a combo? East Coast with the living cost of the Midwest. There you go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think Western New York is like almost Midwest. So yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah it's pretty close. Um, I don't know. It's uh, That's another pass for me. I'll decline. I'll, right. I'll just say I'll just say I miss the food in Texas, but I don't want to live there particularly. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like the Midwest living, but East Coast has a certain thrill to it, I feel. Um, yeah. Stars or angels on top of a Christmas tree? Mm. Star. 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 Star for me as well. Star of David. Mm. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rain or snow? Uh, snow. Snow. Or what are we talking, holiday or just like every day? Why do you have to qualify every <laughs> single question? I don't like these I guess think just knows. in general, in general. In general, uh, rain. Yeah, rain for me as well. I, I'd love to live in like Seattle or the Pacific Northwest. It rains every, like every time it rains, I'm like, oh my God, it's raining. And my wife's like, what is wrong with you? Um, favorite stocking stuffer? This is not a yes, no. But either, mm. either to give or receive. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Nice. Uh, well, I never had that growing up, but and also I could answer this uh, Will style, get all philosophical. Well, it depends on what you mean by <laughs> <laughs> the metaphysical stuff. It's like feet or the. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna say uh, the time I got an iPod from my host family when I was studying at Interlock and Arts Academy. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's the only time I've done stockings. Mm-hmm. Uh. Uh, oranges, like clementine oranges. I don't know why. That's like a tradition thing. Nice. Uh, I got to go with socks. I used to hate it, and now like I have holes in all my socks, and I cannot wait to get new socks. So that's going to be my favorite stocking stuffer. All right, here we go, Will. Favorite holiday movie? Can be one that was already mentioned. It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. Crap. I don't know. Um... You know what? I want to change my answer. Okay. You're not going to know this movie, though. It's called The Juggler of Notre Dame. Do not know that movie. You're correct. Oh, my God. Um, I know it's a weird movie about a kid who tortures the people who are invading his home, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go oh. with Home Alone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know what? Actually, I would say Christmas Vacation, uh, you know, Chevy Chase, National Lampoon, but I grew up on it and we recently rewatched it and it doesn't necessarily age that well. Um, so what's the Will Ferrell one with the oh. Elf? Oh. I like Elf. I like Elf. That's, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. one, yeah. yeah. I got to go with Love Actually, even though it's hard for me to watch because I cry every time. And oh, wife, come on. My wow. wife can vouch for it for this. <clears throat> oh, man. She's like, we got to watch it. And I'm like, I like the movie, but it just it hits me, you know? So, um, so yeah. Anyways, thanks for doing the lightning round, kind of, Will. Thanks for participating. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Uh, before we go, I'm going to give you guys a chance to just, you know, any last words you have, uh, just whatever you want to say, uh, if you want to give a shout out to somebody or whatever, uh, go ahead. Ralph, anybody or anything? Uh, shout out to all the clarinet players out there who are struggling to practice through COVID. Just keep it up. This is almost over. Mm-hmm. Gabby? Yeah. To the clarinetists, uh, keep practicing and don't be afraid to you know, spend some of this free time learning something totally different. Absolutely. Will? 
Um, clarinet specifically? Yeah, I mean, keep well, whatever practicing. you want. Oh, okay. Um, the one time you can do whatever you want, and and you decided <laughs> to go the other way. <laughs> no, everybody, just uh, you know, stay healthy, be safe. Uh, you know, happy New Year. Absolutely. We'll see I have you on a the other side. I have a I have a specific shout out. Sure. Uh, I think his name is Mohammed Shams. Okay. Do you know this guy? Play with Shams. Mm -mm. If you don't know this guy's YouTube channel, I mean, he has recorded the accompaniment to like almost everything that the clarinet can play. And it's been a real valuable resource during this time. Oh, cool. Oh, piano. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And like very, very well done. Cool. We'll have to check it out. So Mohammed Shams, is that his name? Yeah, but it, his, his YouTube channel is Play with Shams. Cool. All right. So everyone, uh, that's a good resource for you. And actually, I'm going to have Ralph on at some point next year, and we're going to talk about like music technology stuff, because I know you're really into, into that and like all the apps and like how that's that's integrated into education and stuff. So I'd love to have you on again um, and, and go through that with you. But uh, gentlemen, it's been such a pleasure. I hope you have had a good time chatting. Uh, it's fun to see all of you. Uh, it's I, I, I can't wait until we can all be in the same room enjoying responsibly an adult beverage together. That's going to be a very enjoyable time. Uh, but uh, for our new listeners out there, we are making our final push in 2020 to reach 500 Instagram followers. I think we're at like 491, so we can do it. So make sure to check us out on Instagram at The Candid Clarinetist. Also, be sure to stop by our website at candidclarinetistpodcast.com, where you can find more information about myself, the podcast, and links to all of our content platforms. You can also check out our new merchandise store and find some great Christmas gifts for The Candid Clarinetist fan in your life. Once again, I am Sam Rothstein, and thanks for tuning in to the Candid Clarinetist podcast.